Within a human lifetime, we see evidence that 8 to 16 degrees C jumps in temperature can occur within decades. Now, we need to understand what's causing that shift. Why is there a big shift from cold conditions to warm conditions? And why do we get so many of these events in the past? To create an understanding of a future in a changing climate depends largely on interpreting climate change events in the past. Eliza Cook is one of an international team of scientists looking to understand rapid climate changes over the last 100,000 years, temperature changes of up to 16 degrees in a 50-year period. This team of scientists is using tephrochronology to learn about past climate events. Tephra, including ash that's generated in a volcanic eruption, can be used as a time marker to link together different climatic archives. Eliza's heading to the Neem camp in the north of Greenland, specifically to look for tephra deposits from the Icelandic ash cloud from 2010, which will help the rest of the team understand how volcanic ash would have been dispersed during the eruptions in the past. It's a challenging journey. It's going to be a challenging month. It's very isolated. You get flown in by the US uh, Air Force and dropped off in the middle of, middle of nowhere, basically. Eliza is part of the Department of Geography at Swansea University. She and other members of the team are working with Professor Shuan Davis over the next five years, looking at volcanic deposits in both ice cores and cores that have come from the seabed. When a volcano erupts, that results in a production of large amount of volcanic material, and volcanic ash, and that is, can be uh, transported very, very widely. It's instantaneously deposited and so it will blanket a landscape, so it will fall on the ice, it will fall on ocean surfaces and it will fall on terrestrial on land surfaces. And then it will form a distinct layer in the ice, in the ocean records and in land records. Because each tephra and the volcanic ash produced has a distinct geochemical fingerprint, then we can find whether we've got the same layer in all these different records and link them together on that basis. The ice cores have one of the most detailed uh, climate histories you can find. The Greenland uh, ice cores uh, has seasonal resolution. You can, you can reveal a climate history that is very detailed and really can show how abrupt climate changes can actually be. Tephrochronology helps us compare the timing of these events in the ice and in the ocean. Understanding that means we can see whether these climate changes were triggered by events in the atmosphere or in the sea. There's a lot of um, unrest and kind of reorganisation of the climate system that is obviously very important. It's happened in the past and it could happen in the future and so we need to understand the mechanisms of that climatic change. Material gathered from the ice sheet in Greenland is brought here to the Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen, which holds 30 kilometers of ice. Now it's time for the most important part of the science, the processing of the material. The work involves a large team in Swansea. Um, so we've got researchers, postdoctoral researchers, PhD students, uh, as well as technicians. And then we also collaborate very closely with other teams. So we're very fortunate to be working with the Ice and Climate Group at the University of Copenhagen and with other universities then that provide material and provide the collaborative network for us. It's, it really is good fun. It's nice to meet these new people, to make new friends and, and make long lasting friendships really. We've got two separate labs that we work in. Uh, the first lab is where we cut the cores and where we prepare all the materials for the day and that is usually around minus 15 
so it has to be cold enough that the ice doesn't melt and doesn't cause any damage, warm enough that you can cope with being there all day. The, the second room, the larger freezer where the ice cores are stored, it tends to be around minus 24 um, and you don't want to be in there for more than about 10 minutes at a time because it really, really chills you down to the bone. In total, we'll be sampling about 1,100 bottles, um, which translates to about 600 bags of ice. They'll be sent back to Swansea, and then I'm going to be analysing them in the laboratory for the next few months. All the while, the processing continues, hunting for microscopic deposits of volcanic eruptions that happened a long time ago. We are generating results at the moment. We need to uh, finalise and do a lot of data analysis to see what we've got. I think by in a few months, maybe in the next year, we will be closer to seeing what we can achieve. The full team works together, collaborating with each other and with other scientists around the world to help find a better understanding, all the while processing material, processing samples, but each member has his own specialism. My responsibilities are the marine side of the project, the investigation of the marine records. One of the biggest challenges in the marine is also determining how the tephra is transported into the marine environment. As well as sampling ice cores, the team is studying cores that have come from the bottom of the oceans. It's a particularly demanding part of the project, involving many stages of processing, sifting, searching, hunting, to find and separate the volcanic ash from the marine mud. If the team finds traces of tephra in the mud that chemically link to traces in the ice, it puts a time constraint around the climate events, helping us understand whether the event was triggered in the sea or in the atmosphere. Understanding that is one of the biggest questions being tackled by this project. Another of the challenges is that the search is for deposits a long way from the volcanic source, so any remaining traces of ash will be microscopic. Obviously when you're looking through the actual slides itself, when you do actually find tephra, it's actually quite exciting and that's what science is all about really. While the laboratory processing is taking place in Copenhagen and Swansea, one of the team members is still working on the ice. Eliza was taking samples for her own research, digging a snow pit, looking for tephra, including ash generated during eruptions that live in the memory of many one of which, in 2010, has a particular poignancy for this research project. When I applied to do this work, for, applied for funding for this project, I had to uh, present my case to the funding body. And at the same time, the Icelandic ash cloud in 2010 occurred, which really demonstrated how widely distributed these volcanic ash layers can be and the chaos that can result. Over the five years this project has to run, the team will make significant breakthroughs in understanding, helping to understand the triggers of these rapid climate warmings that occurred during the last glacial period, between 115,000 years ago and 11,500 years ago, and greater certainty around what can be expected with our current shifting climate.